What's up you sick mother bluffers? I'm back at final table for the 20k guaranteed tournament. Let's get into it. In this one I get dealt 98 suited under the gun. I open to 600, folds around to the small blind who calls, and the big blind comes along as well. We go through ways to the flop which comes queen 6 7 rainbow. I've got an open ended straight draw and a backdoor flush draw. Both blinds check to me. I continue for a thousand and they both make the fold. Always nice taking down the first pot of the night with 9 high. Something pretty funny happens in this hand. I get my first card, but when the dealer pitches the second one, it hits both my finger and my stack, and it flips over. That card is the Ace of Diamonds. Always sucks when that happens. So the dealer tosses me another card, and the action starts with a limp from the Undergun player. Undergun 1 raises to 1000. When action gets to me, I peel my bottom card, and it's the King of Diamonds. Fuck, I would've had Ace King of Diamonds. I peel the second card, and it's the King of Hearts. Damn, I somehow get an upgrade to Pocket Kings, that's so sick. Back to the action, I 3 bet to 3500 from the cutoff. Action folds back to Under the Gun who folds, and sadly, Under the Gun 1 is going to fold as well. In this one, there's a couple of limps from Under the Gun and middle position before action folds to me in the small blind, and I look down at Queen Ted off suit. I would most often just fold here, but this time I decide to call, and the big blind checks their option. We go four ways to the flop, which comes 9-10 deuce rainbow, my flop top pair. Being first to act, I'm going to start things off with a check, and action checks around. The turn comes the jack of diamonds. With action checking around on the flop, I was planning to start betting, but now that there's an overcard to my 10, I'm going to play this one cautiously and check. Once again, action checks around. I'm pretty confident I have the best hand, until the river comes the ace of spades. I check for a third time, and this time the undergun player is going to bet 600, middle position folds. I don't know why, but as soon as under the gun put their chips out, I thought to myself, man, this bet is absolute bullshit, they're just trying to rep the ace. And since the big blind has checked all three streets, I'm not expecting any action behind me. For those reasons, I decide to make the call, and as expected, the big blind folds. Under the gun flips over a deuce and a three. Not sure if there were value betting their pair of deuces or turning it into a bluff. In any case, my pair of tens is going to take this pot down. In this hand, action folds to the cutoff who opens for 700 before I look down at Queen Jack suited on the button. I think this hand plays really well as a call. Both blinds fold. We go heads up to a flop of 10 5 deuce rainbow. Cutoff continues for 800. With some backdoor flush and straight draws as well as two overs, I decide to make the call. The turn comes the jack of spades. The cutoff fires a second bet for 2000. I don't think I'm getting value for much by raising here. There's also not a ton of cards I need to protect against, so once again, I just call. The river comes the knight of hearts, and the cutoff bets again for 4200. I'm not feeling super comfortable with just top pair here. It feels like I'm beat, but I block some of the hands I lose to, like queens, jacks, ace jack, king jack, king queen. I unblock ace king. Man, eh, I feel like I'm just trying to justify a borderline bad call. Curiosity gets the best of me, and I look my opponent up. The good news is that they were bluffing. Bad news is they hit their straight on the river with King Queen. Nice run out for my opponent. I lose a sizable chunk of my stack here. In this one, a wild player is going to open shove for 8 bigs from under the gun. Action falls to me on the button, and I look down at Ace 5 off suit. As I said, this guy has been playing way too many hands, calling way too many bets. Hence, why they were down to their last 8 bigs. It looks like they're in a given mood and my stack could use a little top up. I decide to make the call and the blinds are going to fold. My opponent shows king 3 off suit. Let's go to a run out. Well, that didn't work out as planned. Let's move on to the next one. In this hand a couple of players are going to limp before I look down at 8-7 suited in the hijack. I make the call as well. Small blind completes and the big blind checks. We go five ways to a flop of deuce nine four all hearts. I flop a flush. Action checks to the low jack who leads for a thousand. I'm going to be honest, it's not every day I flop a middling flush in a five way pot, and I'm not really sure what to do here. I guess the optimal play would be to raise partially for value, but mostly to protect against the bigger flush draw. But there's going to be a lot of uncomfortable turns and rivers from my hand, so I'd rather keep the pot manageable, just make the call, and see how things develop. The three other players fold. 
We're going heads up to the turret, which comes to 7 of diamonds, great card for me. The cutoff does not slow down, and they continue for 1900. At this point, I decide that my flush is probably good, and that I'm most likely up against a hand like Ace X or King X of Hearts, maybe a set. I need to charge these hands to see a river because if it's a heart, I will either A, lose to a bigger flush, or B, not get any more value from a set, and if it's not a heart, I won't get any more value from a flush draw. For those reasons, I decide to raise to 5,000 and the low jack pretty quickly folds. In this one, the wild player from before limps, action folds to me in the cutoff, and I look down at ace king. I raise to 1,500, it folds back to under the gun and they make the call. We go heads up to a flop of jack 8, 10, 1 diamond, 2 clubs. Under the gun checks, and against this very sticky player, I decide to check back. The turn comes to 6 of diamonds, and on this card, under the gun leads for 1,700. I decide to make the call, as I believe an ace or king will give me the best hand, and I can go for a bluff if the river comes another club or diamond. The river comes, the 7 of clubs, and this time, under the gun checks. I'm going to go with my plan of trying to represent a flush. There's also a 4-liner to a straight, and uh, although I don't really have that many 9s in my range, a big bet could really put pressure on all of my opponent's single-pair holdings. I fire a bet of 6,000, and under gun goes deep into the tank. It looks like they're going to fold, but after about a minute, they finally make the call, and they show jack-6 of hearts for turned 2-pair. Really annoying for them to have 2-pair here. I think they were definitely folding 1-pair. On to the next one. In this hand, action folds to the button who opens for 2100 before I look down at queen 10 suited in the small blind. Sitting on about 8 bigs, I decide to 3 bet shove. The button is going to have a lot of weaker opening hands when the action folds to them, and if they end up making the call, I'll still have some pretty decent equity. The big blind folds, action is back on the button, and they snap call with ace king. On to a run out we go. Booty. The Portland nuts, right? Yeah. Here's your 10. No queen, please. Nice to get a little bit lucky here and get a full double up. In this one, we're back from break and I took the add-on for 15,000 chips, hence the bigger chip stack. Action folds to me and I look down at King Jack suited in middle position. I open for a min raise and the big blind is the only player to make the call. We go heads up to a flop of 386, two spades, no hearts. Big blind checks. This is a better flop for them than for me. I check back. The turn comes a jack of diamonds. I make top pair. The big blind decides to lead for 1500. There are now a ton of flush and straight draws I need to protect against. I raise to 4500 and the big blind makes the fold. In this hand, under the gun opens the action to 2100. It folds all the way around to me in the big blind and I look down at 6-5 suited, a fine hand to see a flop with. I make the call. We go heads up to a flop of 943 rainbow. I check to under the gun who continues for 2100. With 6 high and an open ended straight draw, I decide to check raise to 7000. I'm expecting a lot of folds from my opponent, maybe some calls, but they don't go for either of these options and instead 3 bet shove in my face. Although I'm getting close to the right price to call to hit my straight, I decide to fold and wait for a better spot. My opponent proudly flips over Queen Jack off suit. What? Damn, dude. Okay. In this one, under the gun limps, action folds to me, and I look down at Ace Jack in the small blind. I'm sitting on 15 bigs, and if I take down this pot, I'll increase my stack by almost 25%. I decide to go for a straightforward shove. The big blind folds. Action is back on under the gun, and I think I have a ton of fold equity here. There's not that many hands that limp and call a 15 big blind shove, but after about a minute of tanking, my opponent decides to make the call. With King 10 off suit, what the actual fuck? Well, I wasn't really expecting this, but I guess I'm all in and at risk. As we go heads up to the flop, which comes Queen 5 Jack Rainbow. I pair my Jack, but my opponent picks up an open ended straight draw. The turn is the Ace of Diamonds. Oh, the irony. My opponent turns the nuts as I make two pair. Well, at least I'm not drawing dead. I can still hit an Ace or a Jack to river a full house. But no, the river is a deuce, and just like that, I am out. What the fuck just happened? Hey guys, quick reminder that I'm co-hosting a meetup game at Final Table in Portland on October 21st. I really hope to see you there. And if you want to play online with me, check out the Button Clickers group on Poker Bros. I have more information on the meetup game and Poker Bros in the description box, so make sure to check it out. Thanks, let's get back into it. It's time for me to head to the cash game streets. I buy in for 400, 
let's see if I can recoup my tournament buy-in. I quickly forget about the tournament as this cash game table is a juicy. I've been sitting at this table for about 30 minutes. One player, a couple of seats to my right, has already reloaded twice. It looks like they came here to donate. Other players are going to show down with pretty weak holdings and sizable pots. So this is definitely an action table and I'm looking forward to get a piece of it. In this first hand, we're playing a Texaha Bomb Pot. We all get six cards, which are to be split into one Hold'em hand and one Omaha hand. For my Hold'em hand, I have 9-5, so I'm not really banking on winning the Hold'em half of the pot. But for the Omaha hand, I have Ace-King, Jack-7, Double Suited, which is a very good starting hand. We go seven ways to the flop, which comes four Deuce Jack, two Diamonds. For the Hold'em hand, I flop a Backdoor Straight Draw. For the Omaha, I flop a Pair of Jacks, but more importantly, the Nut Flush Draw. Action is going to check to the button who leads for 30. Four players, including myself, make the call. The turn comes to three of hearts. I improve to an open-ended straight draw for the hold'em hand. Not much changes for Omaha. Action checks to the button for a second time, and they fire for a hundred bucks. Undergun player is going to make the call. I'm not loving the spot because, well, I could break out, or I could hit my flush, but if the board pairs and I face a huge bet, I'm going to be in a world of pain. I still end up making the call. Let's hit one of those boards. If not, I'm going to be stuck early in this session. We are going three ways to the river, which comes the seven of diamonds. Yes, I river the nuts in Omaha. Undergun checks to me. I'm going to shove for 221 bucks, which basically screams I have the nuts. That doesn't stop the button from shoving over the top. Undergun is going to fold. Going to showdown, my opponent is going to show a queen high flush for the Omaha hand, so it's no surprise I win the Omaha half of the pot with the nuts. And for the hold'em hand, they show 7-6 off suit. Wow, I am shocked to see that I was good with 9 high until my opponent paired up on the river. My guy double barreled with the third nut flush draw on one hand and 7 high and the gut shot on the other. I can't believe I almost scooped this pot. Unfortunately, I'll have to settle for a chop. But yeah, this goes to show just how juicy this table is. All right, so I've already recouped my tournament buy-in. And this one, Undergun is going to put on the straddle. The low jack limps before I look down at jack 10 suited in the high jack. I race to 20 and I get called by the cutoff, big blind and low jack limper. We go four ways to a flop of queen, eight, nine, two clubs. I flopped the nuts. The big blind checks. To my surprise, the low jack leads for 40 bucks. With a flush draw on board, I have to protect and get value from my straight. I make it 120 to go. The cutoff, same player from the hand before. Cold calls the 120. The big blind and low jack are going to get out of the hand. So we go heads up to the turn. Keep it clean, dealer, please. It's the four of hearts, perfect. Looks like my opponent has just under half a pop bet left in their stack, so that's what I bet. And they snippity snap. We're all in and going to the river. No club, no pair. It's the king of diamonds. Yes, I still got the nuts. Going to showdown, my opponent shows pocket eights for a flopped set. Yikes, what a cooler. Just for context, the player to my right called the straddle, then my $20 raise, then let out the flop with queen four. No doubt they would have lost a big chunk making two pair on the turn, but again, just goes to show how good this table is. I take down this huge pot and I am now up almost 600 bucks. Let's go. A few more bits go by. I lost around 200 bucks raising and whiffing or breaking out big draws in bomb pots before this hand where the low jack opens up the action to eight bucks. The button calls and I look down at pocket aces in the small blind. I love to see it. I threw a bet to 20 bucks, which in retrospect is too small. I should probably make it around 30 bucks. And three players, including the original Razor and Caller, are going to come along. We're going four ways to a flop of Deuce 5 Jack 2 clubs. A pretty safe looking flop for me, especially holding the Ace of Clubs. Since we went four ways to the flop, I'm going to target a Jack. I bet 50, and the button is the only player to make the call. We're going heads up to the turn, which comes the Ace of Diamonds. I turn a set. Turning a set is nice, but it's going to make it hard for me to get more value from my opponent. I can't afford to check back and give them a free card just in case they're on the flush draw. I bet 110 and they fold a jack face up. Sucks I couldn't get more value, still a nice pot coming my way. 
In this one, the button puts out a $10 straddle, the small blind calls, I look down at queen jack offsuit in the big blind. Not really a hand I want to make it 40 to go with when almost every hand has been going 3, 4, or even 5 ways to the flop. Not really a hand I want to fold either when players have been showing a willingness to show up on the river with just a pair, sometimes not even top pair. So I make the call. Middle position and cutoff are going to come along and the button checks their option. We go 5 ways to a flop. Of queen, ace, jack, 2 diamonds, I flop bottom 2. Small blind is going to lead for 10. Bottom two is a hand that can get value, but also needs protection, especially on this wet board. I make it 40 to go. Action folds to the cutoff, who is going to 3-bet shove for 126. Interesting. I haven't seen this player 3-bet or show much aggression thus far. Thinking about their possible holdings here, I'm discounting a set since they just called preflop. I think they would probably raise with ace-queen or ace-jack, so I think they either have a flush draw or king-10 for the straight. Looking back on this hand, I'm getting a pretty good price to call, but my gut just told me I was behind, so I went with the next point fold, and my opponent was kind enough to show king 10 for the straight. I guess I lose the minimum, I'll take it. About 3 orbits later, I'm a little bit tilted because I could have left and booked a nice profit, but the table was so good that I decided to stick around. Unfortunately, things haven't been going my way, and I've lost another 150 bucks or so. In this hand, Undergun puts the straddle on. Undergun 1, Button, and Small Blind all make the call before I look down at King Queen offsuit in the big blind. I race to 25, Undergun calls, Undergun 1 folds, the Button calls, and for the first time tonight, the Small Blind folds. We go three ways to a flop of 10 Jack Deuce. I pick up an open ended straight draw and decide to start things off with a check, and action checks around. The turn is the five of hearts, I check, under the gun bets 25, and the button folds. Player in under the gun has been extremely active at this table, they've been involved in a ton of pots, and I've seen them do a lot of betting, especially when action checks to them. For that reason, I decide to make the call. The river comes, the three of clubs, I completely break out, frustration gets the best of me, I want to try and take this pot down. As I'm grabbing my chips, I'm telling myself, this bet makes absolutely no sense. But that doesn't stop me from sliding 110 bucks across the betting line. I'm staring at the board and my heart sinks as from the corner of my eye, I see my opponent pretty quickly move their hands. It looks like they're reaching for calling chips. But no, it's their cards they were reaching for and they make the fold. I'm really not happy with the way I played this hand, but in the end, the chips are being pushed my way, so I'm not going to beat myself up too much about it. This brings us to the final hand of the vlog, and this one, the button puts the straddle on, the big blind calls, the low jack, an older gentleman who recently joined the table, raises to 15, I'm in the cutoff, and I look down at pocket jacks. Still not feeling super confident about how I'm playing, I decide to just make the call and set mine, or possibly call down, depending on board texture. The button and big blind limper are also going to make the call. So we're going four ways to a flop of ace three ace rainbow. Action checks to the low jack with c-bets for 25. With the double ace on the board, that's only one over card to my jacks, and it makes it a little bit less likely that my opponent has an ace. So I think this is the perfect board to call. The two other players fold. We're going heads up to the turn, which comes to 10 of hearts. My opponent does not slow down, and they bet 25 again. Strange sizing. It comforts me in thinking that my opponent does not have an ace. They could be taking me to thin value town with kings or queens though, which would really suck. In any case, I'm never folding for that price, I call. The river comes, a 6 of diamonds, which is pretty much a brick. The low jack sizes up to 40, which is still a super small bet in relation to the pot. I'm not loving this pot, this really feels like kings or queens, but once again, I can't bring myself to fold for this price. I make the call, and the low jack shows, queen nine of hearts for queen high, let's fucking go. Nice to finish the session by taking out a pot. I was in the game for 400 bucks and cashed out for 900, booking a profit of 500. Taking the tournament buy-in into account, that's a total profit of 350 for the night, I'll take it. Thank you so much for watching, good luck at the tables, and I'll catch you in the next one.